best way in the midst of what for each of us has been a tough year. So the joy for today, even with masks, totally different than we ever thought we'd do, here we are. And so now, will you and our family continue to support both Josh and Heidi as they go through their marriage? Thank you. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may be seated. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator and redeemer, as you gladden the wedding at Cana, Cana in Galilee by the presence of your Son, so by his presence now bring your joy to this wedding. Look in favor upon Josh and Ivy. And grant them, grant that they, rejoicing in all of your gifts, may at length celebrate with Christ the marriage feast, which has no end. Amen. We're going to read a couple of scriptures today, but I need for you and you and Josh and I need to know this is yours. As we begin, we always want to remember the center of where our relationship is, and it is in God. And you chose a couple of verses, so from 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient and love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy, prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in it, in part, disappears. And from Ephesians, the fourth chapter. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and all. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to yourselves, to your husbands, as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives submit to their husbands in everything. But husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. But after all, no ever, no one ever hated their own body. But they be in care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother, and will be united to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. This is a profound mystery. But I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each of you also must love his wife, as he loves himself and the wife 
must respect her husband. These are the words of our Lord. And we know that as you guys are starting your marriage, you're not unfamiliar with each other. You know each other well. You've known each other for a long time. And it is, excuse me, good and right that you now are becoming one. I have enjoyed our year plus of having conversation, of getting to know each other, of getting to maybe even touch some of those areas that you went, you mean we have to talk about? We have to talk about like babies and sex and planning things and timing and all these. You mean we have to talk about our dreams and our future? We do. And that's what was important is that as each of you struggled a little bit in answering questions at times, we had to call it in God's hands. And that's what I feel like we did. We walked through this year together, getting to know what was and what wasn't. You maybe learned something about each other you didn't know before, even though you've known each other a very long time. But I wanted you to have this as the center of what you started your marriage. You're starting it here. It was important to come to God and to say he's the important one in our marriage. And how do we live that together? You've brought your friends and family together. But I want you to know that this is where we center ourselves. That's why this is an important piece in what we do today. It is what guides us through the years ahead. Oh, they're not going to be so pretty as today. You're going to have some days and years that are pretty tough. That life won't go like you planned it. Or so you think. But maybe it's time then that we stop and say, okay, God, what is this all about? What am I supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? See, this is the day that we get to say, yeah. And we see both of you so glorious and so beautiful, all cleaned up as you stand here and get to say, I do. But I commit myself to each other, just as the Ephesians text. It's not about one being lesser than the other, though. It's all about you really are equals. You, I, be, have to say yes. Okay, we're in this together. But Josh, it is yours to take responsibility and say yes. We will work this through. Together, with time. God is the center. I know of where you guys are. I've watched you grow in this year. I watched your excitement. I heard it, anxiety in the last, oh, 10 days of trying to get a license and figure out how to get that done. And it's changed a lot in, since 41 years ago when I got to do it. It's nothing like that was then. But you know what? You did it. You figured out your triumph over something. God is good all the time and all the time god is good and he will carry you both throughout your marriage amen don't you guys face each other like i said i've never done a wedding with masks on but this is all new for us isn't it friends the Lord God, in his goodness, created us male and female. And by the gift of marriage, found a human community and a joy that begins now and has brought to per perfection in the life to come. Because of sin, our age-old rebellion, the gladness of marriage can be overcast, and the gift of the family can become a burden. But because God, who established marriage, continues to bless it, with his abundant and ever-present support, we can be sustained in our weariness and have our joy restored. Ivy and Josh, if it is your intention to share with each other your joys and your sorrows and all that the years will bring, 
with your promises, bind yourselves together as husband and wife. Ivy, I take you, Josh, to be my husband from this day forward to join with you and share all that is to come. And I promise to be faithful to you until death parts us. Josh, I take you, I need to be my wife from this day forward to join with you and share all that is to come. And I promise to be faithful to you until death parts us. The rings are a sign of your unending love and really of God's unending love for each of you. I would ask, I do want you to take Josh's ring and say these words as you place it on his finger. I give you this ring as a sign of my love and faithfulness. Josh, I use. I give you this ring as a sign of my love and faithfulness. I give Josh. By their promises before God and in the presence of this congregation, have bound themselves to one another as husband and wife. Blessed be the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit now and forever. For those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. A cord. A cord made up of three strands. One is for the bride, one is for the groom, and one is God. God in the center keeps us focused. Brides, our you are awesome, and it is a great day. Grooms, you are the head of the house. You are the one that comes before. But in the midst is God always woe throughout your lives, always holding you, even through good times and bad, oh, questionable things and amazing things, because God is good. This is a sign for you to and a remembrance when you go home. You hang it and you remember that this day your lives are intertwined with each other. Your families are intertwined no matter what. You have got them all, but they're together with God always as the gold wrapped around both of you. See, it's never, it's never separate. They're always wrapped together. That's how your wives are to be. Thank you. Go ahead and kneel. <laughs> the hard part. I know that. <laughs> Let us pray. The Lord God who created our first parents established in them marriage establish and sustain you that you may find the light in each other and grow in holy love until your lives end. Let us bless God for all the gifts which we receive today. For God, constant in mercy, great in faithfulness, with high praise we recall your act of unfailing love for the human family, for the house of Israel, and for your people, the church. We bless you for the joy that your servants, Ivy and Josh, have found in each other and pray that you give 
that you give to us such a sense of constant love that we may employ all our strength in a life of praise of you, whose work alone holds true and endures forever. Faithful Lord, source of love, pour down your grace upon Ivy and Josh, that they may fulfill the vows that you have made this day and reflect your steadfast love and their lifelong faithfulness to each other. As members of them of the body of Christ, use us to support their life together. And from your great store of strength, give them power and patience, affection and understanding, courage and love towards you, towards each other, and towards the world, that they may continue together in mutual growth according to your will in Jesus Christ. Gracious Father, you bless the family, and you renew your people. Enrich husbands and wives, parents and children more and more with your grace, that strengthening and supporting each other, they may serve those in need and be a sign of the fulfillment of your perfect kingdom, where your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit live and reign. And God, let this be our prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, and know well that God's command is to love each other as I have loved you. And now I ask that we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, keep you in his life and truth, his love now and forever. Amen. You may stand up. Okay, well, there's one thing we had to have Josh practice on last night. Um, it seemed like kissing was maybe a problem a little bit. So his homework last night was to go home and practice kissing. So, would you like to kiss your bride? All right. <laughs> And now I would like to present to all of you for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. Josh Armstrong. Yeah. 